You are watching the Movacon HMI Editor Basics self-guided video tutorial series. In this video, we'll create the recipe screen to load different sets of production data onto the machine. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. For this video, I'm assuming you have already completed the previous videos in this series. I'll start with a preview of the final outcome. A recipe means you can save a set of data from the automatic production screen into the device itself. All you do is type in, for example, recipe one, and when I hit save, it saves this temp data into the HMI device. The user could be in the auto screen and perhaps change some of the settings. Those settings could then be saved in the recipe screen by simply reading in what we're calling those active values. Those are the same values from the auto screen. The active values read those in to the temp values, temporary values of the HMI, type in a new recipe name, and then save that data. Now I could go back to recipe one that loads the saved data into the temp area, and I can activate it, which writes it over into the active area. This column here is identical to the column of data here in the auto screen. Additionally, you can export a single recipe data set using the export button. For example, this was recipe one and save that as a CSV file. Then even if you delete that recipe, now recipe one is no longer available, but I could import it from that CSV file and save it again as recipe one. I hope this little demo helps understand what's going on here. Another way to look at this conceptually is that each of the recipes you saw me choose can be thought of as a row in a spreadsheet, and they call that the index. You saw me, the user, I was selecting the different names of these recipes and even entering new ones. Whichever one of those recipes is selected is the one that will be shown in that temporary variable area, and the activate command loads them into the active variables. In a similar way, the active variables can be read into the temporary variable area. And then with the save button, they're saved into that row of data. Now I'll show you what's happening at the HMI editor level. At the project explorer level, you have the name of the project, data loggers and recipes is the area. You'll add this recipe and name it and then individually add each of these columns of data. It's literally called add a new column. So each of these is a column with the active variable and that temp variable that you saw. So that's just a matter of creating these items and entering those variables. The software has built in a way to right click and create the recipe screen automatically that generates this drop down list, the buttons, and it makes some uh, labels here and edit box displays with the correct temp variable in it. I'm going to recommend you use these items on the left, but uh, don't use the text boxes. The reason is that the formatting options are very limited. This type of text box is different than the type you've been using when you enter a, a text box. It's actually a rectangle with text in it. This is a literal text box and it can only use certain system formats and colors, for example. I also don't recommend that you use these edit box displays simply because we took some time here in the auto screen to format all of the decimal points and place separators and units, the max and min. It's a lot easier just to copy these from the auto screen and put them in your recipe screen and then adjust the variable for each of them to point to the temp variable. Optionally, you can copy and paste that active variable from the auto screen also. It's just the same list here. I think that's enough to get you started. So if you would please open the mini lab and use this as your guide to get the recipes working. You can pause the video now and resume it to see me run through the steps myself.
Welcome back. I'm going to do the recipe mini lab. Start here with defining the recipe. We need a new recipe under data loggers and recipes. I'll right click to add a new recipe and change the name to widget recipes. Next, we'll make two strings as recipe index variable and temp recipe index variable. That data column here, recipe index, is created automatically when you create the recipe itself. So I'll start with the variable. We need a new string. So I'll call it recipe index variable. And we need to change that one here from word to string. Okay, there it is, it's a string now. And same with the temp variable. New temp recipe index variable. This one also has to be a string. String, okay. Now it's a string, let's choose it. Moving on to part C, we need to make now the rest of the recipe variables for the different columns. The first one will be cycles. So I'll right click for a new column named cycles. Now this variable already exists. I'll filter by the word cycle. This was cycle target. And I'll make the temp variable with the same data type, sign word, and just put temp cycle target, and change that here to sign word, okay? Now that one's done. I just need to repeat this carefully for all of the other columns of data. So how about move velocity, new column, move vel, the variable, I'll filter that to find move vel, and now create the temp variable. This will be a float. New temp move vel. Okay. And let's change that data type to F for float. Now temp move vel is a float. Okay. And we'll repeat this for the act deck. New column. Act deck. The variable filter is move act deck, also a float. Now the temp is new, temp move act deck, okay. Let's change that one also to float, float, okay. Now I think I'll do the positions just a different way here to take advantage of their similarities. Let's start by creating those variables first. I'll just right click here to create a new variable. Temp x move abs pause, and that should be the float data type. Now I could just copy this, paste it a couple times, and then massage the name for a Y on this one, and Z on this one. Likewise, now up in the data column, I can add a new one. I'll call it X pause, the variable. I'll search for ABS. The active variable is HMI X move abs pause, and that recipe temp variable I just created. Okay, now I could even copy this data column, copy and paste this a couple times, and just massage the names here. Y pause, replace all the X's here with Y's, and on the other one I'll replace all the X's with Z's, and delete that number two, I'm not sure this saves any time in this case, but it's just a different way to do it. I wanted to show that. We have one more here for delay. I'll just make that one normal. A new column called delay. And for the variable, filter for delay. There it is. It's a D word. And create the temp variable. Temp delay. And let's change that one here also to a D word. Okay. All right, got the right one. And we're done. Little troubleshooting tip for you here is uh, you might want to look at all your temp variables. Just be sure they have the right data type. Go down to the variables list like I'm doing and be sure the floats are floats. Temp cycle target should be a sign word and the index variables should be strings. Now it's time to create the screen. And the first step here was to go to that recipe and check the property under database options called save as CSV file. You'll want that for the import and export function. And then right click to create that recipe screen. 
create recipe screen. And like I said in the overview, the only pieces I want from this are this combo box and these buttons. So I will select those here, copy, and go to our prepared recipes screen. Maybe I'll use that as a title up here and paste this in. Then it's just a matter of making this all fit. You can make this combo box a little smaller. Select the buttons, not the embedded screen. And there should be some room here. I probably don't need it this long, so I will reduce the size. Then control select the other buttons and use make same width. Should have done that one too. Okay. The temp data I'm going to take from the auto screen and select all of this here to copy it, paste it into the recipes screen here. And then I'm going to go through each of these and change that variable to the temp variable. The easy way to do that is to filter by the word temp. Temp cycle target. This will be the temp move vel right there. X cell, D cell, temp, the X position. There it is. The Y position. There it is. The Z position. It's pretty easy. Just take some time. The delay was here. So now I have all of these temp variables in here, just like their widget recipes edit box has those same temp variables in it. The advantage is I have all of the formatting established from the previous screen. If this much works, that is the minimum requirement for the training. So let's test this part first. And now you see I have all zeros here in the temp variables but that's not what we have in the auto screen. So let's just do a little test here if I can read it in. Okay, did they all read in correctly? Seems like it's the same data. Let's see if I can save one of these. Recipe one, save. Then I'll change a little bit here and save recipe number two and see if I can go back to recipe one. Yep, that worked. I'll choose recipe two and activate it. Now the auto screen has the data from recipe number two. Let me try and export recipe two. I will delete recipe two. There it says it's deleted. It still shows it here because that's just the text that's last entered. Recipe one, there's no recipe two. I'll see if I can import recipe two again. There it is, four cycles. And then if you wanted to save it, Type in whatever name you want for this and save. So that was my verify operation. Main troubleshooting tips on this one is just the data type has got to be correct for all of those variables. And I've also seen spelling errors. And you can try to check those with the refactoring explorer. Remember, just to click on the screen. Click on my recipe screen, see if you have any issues. Click on an area that's blank and those should pop up. Now as a bonus, I'll go over these optional parts. This first one is to put that production data right there on the recipe screen. That's not too hard. Just go back here to the auto screen, copy what I need, which is just the edit box displays. And now I'll paste it here into the recipes screen. Maybe all this needs to move down a little bit and I'll create some titles here. These are the temps and these or what I call active. Let me nudge that over just one more block. And just for formatting, I'll put a rectangle over this whole thing here. Change it to dark blue and send that to the back. The next feature would be to check if there's a difference between the temp values and the active values. And I think we could do that with dynamic text. For example, on cycles, there is under dynamics, dynamic text, I'll enable it. And for this variable, let's just do a comparison expression. I'll filter for cycle. And the expression is simply, does that cycle target equal the temp variable? Okay. If they are equal, that'll be true or green. And if they're not equal, that'll be red. I'll just leave those colors alone. And go through and do all these. Enable velocity variable. Filter for move vel. Expression is move vel equals temp move vel. Okay. Now for act deck, we'll enable that one. 
filter for act deck and make the expression move act deck equals temp move act deck. Okay. Let's try pause X, Y, and Z at the same time. Enable them. Choose the variable. Filter by A, B, S. Make an expression. I'll do the X axis. X equals temp X. Okay. I'll click off of here and update that X with a Y on both sides of the equation. And same with Z on the left side and on the right side. And now let's do delay. Enable that one. Find those variables here. Filter for delay. And make that expression delay equals temp delay. All right. The third option was uh, prevent the user from changing the data. Instead, the user must change the active values and read into the recipe. That just means to all of these edit box displays and under style, make them read only. And if they're read only, you might as well get rid of the spin enable. Okay. And the last one I'll do is to create a pop-up confirmation before recipe delete. This is something you can do really for any button. And it starts with a confirmation screen. So let me make that new screen here. Add a new screen called delete recipe confirm. And I think that one will be white in the background. And we said that the dimensions would be 400 by 300. That's somewhat arbitrary. Just need it smaller as all. I'm going to do the delete button first. It says to copy them from the recipe screen. So here is delete. Copy that one. Paste that in there. Maybe make that a little wider. And it says to add the command screen, close and return back. So what commands on release are here already? There's the delete report. Add a new command under screen called close and return back. So it'll do both of those here. Okay. I'm going to copy this button and paste it for the cancel button. I'll just call it cancel. And then in those commands, I obviously don't want the delete part of it. So let's remove and just leave only close and return back. I should have a text on here. I'll call it confirm delete of selected recipe. Maybe make that a little bit bigger. And now it says change the command of the delete button from the recipe screen to open modal pop-up screen. Right, so back to recipes. We don't want this delete button to actually delete. I'll be sure I click on it. The command that it executes should be simply to, here, not delete. I'll remove that and make a new command. It's a screen command to open as a pop-up screen. And that screen will be the screen we just created. Delete recipe confirm. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to show the recipe manager or this video it will get too long, but that's under toolbox objects, recipe manager. And if you want, you could put this recipe manager in a screen somewhere and play around with that a little bit and see how that works. I am not going to do that. Let's just see if I made any mistakes with the other optional parts. Let's check it out here. Save those changes and launch it. I can no longer change the temp column. I'm changing the active column and you see that it changes the color when they are not equal. I could call this recipe three and save it and then try to delete it and up pops this box. I could cancel and it's not deleted. It's still there. Or I could delete and now it's gone. And with this, I will conclude the recipe mini lab. Thank you for watching this video and please go to www.yaskawa.com slash HMI for more information on Yaskawa's HMI products and Movicon HMI editor.